Hello, my name is Scott. Welcome to Today Pass, and you join us here at Mill Hill Test Centre. It's number nine, the building in front that's a bit hard to see, just on the left-hand side of the blue Mercedes. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a whole test route. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to try and pass your test first time at Mill Hill. Now, the car park where you'll be parked is really, really far back behind me, and if you come here on a rainy day, I suggest you bring an umbrella because you will get wet uh, walking from the test center car park to the actual test center which we've just started on so if you have a look here the way that i'm facing now there's a long path just ahead of us towards those green bins in the distance and around the left hand side to those bins is the car park and it's just like the car park you see in front of us. However, it's a lot more empty. Yet on the way going in and out, which I will show you at the end of this video, you need to take lots of care. It's very easy to fail your driving test coming in and out of this car park as the visibility is very restricted and the space is minimal. Okay, at the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right. So examiner may ask you to go this way and I'm gonna show you what you need to know if you're going right at Mill Hill Driving Test Center. So as we edge forward, the visibility is not great. So I'm doing a little bit of a peep and creep. I'm leaning a little bit to try and see down on this right hand side, especially the right hand side is the most dangerous side. I can see a slight opportunity here. So I'm going to take this opportunity, giving quite a bit of gas. And here we are approaching a mini roundabout. At the mini roundabout, turn left, mirror internal, mirror external left, signal left, Watch the wheels of the vehicles that are coming from the right-hand side at the roundabout. The wheels are more of a guarantee of telling exactly where a vehicle is going to go. I wouldn't necessarily rely on signals, but definitely look at the wheels and take care for signals because they're both there to help you. What is the speed limit once we reach these signs? So it's 30 here. Did you see the sign? It said 20. Can you hear the noise on the vehicle? <coughs> That's warning me. I've reached speed limit. Now the person behind me looks quite annoyed, but I have to do the speed limit, which is 20 miles an hour. Can you see the conditions coming up here? We have the bus oncoming, and we have the center line in the middle of the road. Now if you see the oncoming vehicle like this one is over the center line, you need to stop. If they can keep their half of the road and it's safe for you to keep going, good. But that's definitely a good tip to know. If the oncoming vehicle is over the center line, you'll most likely need to come to a stop. This is what's called a meeting situation. It's a big area for people to fail on their driving tests. Now, the way you want to increase your chances of passing is practicing, but practicing perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. There's a zebra crossing here, looking both sides. Can you see where the lorry's parked on the other side of the road here? That would obscure anybody's visibility of that zebra crossing. Now, normally, that is quite common, whether it's traffic or a, a very awkwardly parked vehicle like that lorry. This can really, really reduce the visibility as you come towards the zebra crossing, as an example. Be prepared to come to a stop as you're not too sure what might be around the corner. So you want to anticipate areas that you can't see into. If that's a bend or a vehicle like the lorry, as an example, stop there, blocking your visibility of a pedestrian crossing or the road ahead, start to slow down. The less you see, the less speed you want to take. We're leaving a 30 road now, oh, sorry, a 20 road, coming into a 30 road. Can you see the speed change? At the roundabout, take the second exit following the road ahead, slowing down to a jogging speed, to a walking speed, to a stop, assessing the traffic, it's clear, I've got an opportunity to go. As I pass the first exit, check my mirrors, in and out, and I signal left to tell everybody that I'm leaving the roundabout. Now you must signal left on a roundabout when you exit, and always try to do this. The only exception to 
Not having to signal when you exit the roundabout is a mini roundabout. And the reason for that is because it's more important for you to keep two hands on the steering wheel and keep control of the vehicle. And as a bonus point to not having to signal when you exit a mini roundabout, it's because by the time you've actually placed the signal on, you've already exited the roundabout. So there's no need as it will not benefit other road users. If you disagree with me, write it down in the comments below. I like when people come with different opinions, but this is what you need to know to pass your driving test first time. I'm only here to give you the best advice. I'm a grade A driving instructor with over 10 years driving experience. If you're interested in doing any intensive courses, they're automatic only, and this is in West London, Pinner Driving Test Center. At the driving, uh, sorry, at the traffic lights, turn right. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Now, did you notice I've actually gone over the center line a little bit to make progress to come to this traffic light? I wish I had a convertible car blazing some tunes like the guy next to me. If you can still hear me over the thumping tunes, then what you need to know is that it was safe for me to go over the line. I wasn't going to cause an accident and it helped me to progress. Can you see? Or well, you can't see. Maybe you can see. There's a van behind me. So if I stayed back there when it was safe for me to keep going, what I'm doing is I'm actually holding the traffic up behind me. So if you can make progress, if it's safe, please try to keep progress. Going over the center line was safe, so I did that, and it helped me to progress to keep the traffic flowing. Having a look here, yep, it's clear. Nobody's oncoming. Everybody was turning left. Gave me an opportunity to clear the junction. Taking one meter from the actual, what do you call them, buses? <laughs> Taking one meter from the bus there, and that gives me a safe clearance from the bus. The speed limit on this road is... 30. Keep looking for signs. If you're not sure of the speed limit, it will be regularly signposted. If you're on a road where there's not regular signposted, uh, signposts for the speed, then you'll need to assume it's a 30 mile an hour road. Do not go over 30. The van behind me is pushing me to go a lot faster, but the speed limit is 30 miles an hour. At the traffic lights, turn right, mirror, mirror, signal, position into the right lane, and I've positioned Positioned here. So see the vehicle in front. This is really good. So they've positioned into the center. I'm going to take that position now. Watch the oncoming vehicle. We slowly stopped. That means I can go because his traffic lights changed red. And if you notice my traffic light in the center of the road, which I call an extension light, it was a one single traffic light by itself, had a green filter arrow on it. That means that I can go. So if you have an arrow that's pointing in your direction, a green arrow on the traffic light, which is called a filter traffic light, pointing in your direction, that holds all other traffic at a red light, giving you an opportunity to go. So please do take care when you have a green arrow, make sure that no one's run a traffic light, but notice that, know that everybody else should have a red traffic light, should in capital letters, and then it's safe for you to proceed. So it's really important you know the difference between a filter traffic light, a green arrow, and a regular traffic light like the ones you can see here, which are circle shapes. So we're coming into a, a cross, sorry, we're coming into a busy high street again here. And what I'm doing, because red traffic lights are your friend, is I'm looking through the back windscreen of the vehicle in front through his front windscreen to see down the road. If I can see round the vehicle, over the vehicle, under the vehicle, you may laugh, but all of this can be very good ways of looking for clues, of assessing what the next hazard might be. Is there a pedestrian? Is there a car? Is there a motorbike? Is there a traffic jam? Is there... Who knows, but we're using that time while we're staying stationary to look for any kind of information or clues ahead that we can see so we can start to assess early and make a good safe decision. I check my mirror to see who's behind me. There's a big gap there. So what I did is I held back to try and allow this car to pass through, which would help the traffic here on the side. Yellow box junction, I can clear it. We don't want to stop on top of yellow. Always drive over yellow. The only I hate bumps. The only exception to stopping on a yellow is when you're turning right and the exit must be clear. So you can go stop in the yellow box if you're turning right, providing that the exit is clear. So once there's no more oncoming traffic and you can turn right, your exit's clear and you can clear the junction. 
very important. If you're still doing your theory test, this is one of the theory test questions. At the roundabout, go straight ahead. Look at the arrows. This is unorthodox. That means the left lane is left only. And watching the traffic on my right, looking at their wheels, everybody was pointing straight. Wheels are straight. No signals on. And that means it's safe for me to go because I can tell exactly where the vehicles are going by looking at their wheels. As you can see here, long roads, next hazard here would be the zebra crossing, very clear, good observations, no obstructions, so I know I can cross that junction there, or that, sorry, that pedestrian crossing, calling everything a junction now. Talking about junction, I can see the giveaway lines and the triangle on the ground, now I can see, sorry, going straight at the roundabout, now I can see the roundabout sign, looking at the wheels, looking at the signal, knew that blue vehicle there was going to turn. So I waited, allowed the vehicle from the right to proceed. Then there was an opportunity, no more traffic, it's safe, and I can continue to go. Okay, so now we're doing the same again. This is called LADA, by the way. We're looking, we're assessing, we're deciding, and we're acting. LADA, look, assess, decide, act. Okay, really important. If you haven't had this mentioned to you before, that is good information to know. It's something you'll just do naturally to a point. You don't have to keep reminding yourself. But in the beginning stages of learning, these little acronyms like mirror signal position speed look, MSPSL, and LADA, look, assess, decide, act, they're all very good, valuable information for you to start to set foundations and routines, which are there to guide you and help you to pass jump. Uh, pass like, why am I saying junctions all the time? There are four junctions. Anyways, junctions are the big hot spots, mostly where people fail because something happens in the junction. But if you come into any junction prepared, it's less likely for there to be any surprises for you to kind of go, oh my God, I don't know what to do. If you come in prepared, you know what to do, then you're more confident, safer driver, more chance of you pass the first time. Double roundabouts again. Can you see the sign here? Nice and easy this time though. We're just going to turn right. So first roundabout, turning right, slowing down, less space, less speed, 10 miles an hour, 9 miles an hour, through there, keeping 9 miles an hour, even slowing down a little bit more because I'm going to turn right the roundabout. No one on the zebra crossing. I'm doing walking speed now. Oh, it's nice and clear. No one on the right. Actually just looked into the art shop there. Really nice pictures. It's called Heart. Heart's Gallery for anybody that's uh, a little art art fanatic. Okay, so now we've got these lights on the car, the Audi. We've got this lady walking towards the Audi. I was assuming she was going to do that. Mirror checks to the right, moving out around her. So that's it. Lada, look, lady, assess. She's walking to the car. The lights are flashing on the car. Oh, decide. She's most likely going to go into the car, as I can see that's her car now. And there you go. She's opened the door. She's going in there. I've made the decision. I'm going to go around. That's what my actions are. So I've done my mirror checks accordingly. Changed direction direction safely and therefore now we're on to the next hazard what can we see there's a triangle on the side there telling me there's a crossroads coming up there's also a bus stop not a major hazard but these are the ones the closest another triangle telling me there's a bend what's the speed limit on this road there are no signs so if there's no signs on the road What's the speed limit? If you answered 30 miles an hour, that would be a correct assumption. Do continue to keep looking for signs as we're not sure. We need to keep looking. And speed changes can change quite rapidly. If you saw the last video I made at Hendon, Hendon and Mill, uh, Mill Hill share test routes, by the way. So if you're looking to do a test at Mill Hill or Hendon, please check out both of the uh, test center test routes and you will have a better knowledge of the area and the junctions that you need to know to give you the best chance of passing first time. So what have we got now? We've got a triangle coming up, warning us that there is a mini roundabout coming up ahead, and at the mini roundabout, I'm gonna be going left. First exit, mirror, mirror, signal left. Ooh, there's a car on my right, so I'm gonna to come to a stop. There's also a motorbike. My favorite pizza here, other pizza is available. Uh, we're gonna start a war now between the two big, the big companies. I know everybody else loves the other one. I love their uh, garlic and herb sauce. Mm -hmm. Not that company, but the other company. 
Right, okay, so we're now following this road, which is going to pretty much take us all the way back to the test center. Ah, it's a 20 mile an hour road. Thank you, car. You just saved me from failing my driving test because you made that ding dong noise. I was aware to the speed limit. So if you're not too sure about the speed limit and you do have a car with technology, if you're moving with the times now and you're not caught up in the 19th century with, you know, typewriters and licking envelopes and sticking stamps and posting letters and you're one of these people that sends text messages and emails then why not continue that kind of method into your driving jump straight into an automatic car everything from the year 2030 will be electric thereafter yes i've said it i'll put my name and i'll lick and stick that to a stamp and send that to the department of transport i don't know what i'm saying anymore (laughs) anyways you get the point i'm not preaching i'm just trying to help you guys understand it's all going automatic okay keeping one meter from the left and the way i do that is by going nice and slow i was doing 10 miles an hour there i'm gonna do 10 miles an hour again now because this island and this i'm actually doing less yeah you know what you're doing you should give me a look like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The sun's out. Everybody's happy. Let's just keep going. So something comes up on your test or even after you pass your driving test, breathe in, breathe out. The moment has gone. Refocus on what's coming up next. Don't get caught up in the past. It's too easy. Our brains are like hardwired for some reason to keep reliving the past. There's nothing you can do about it anymore. So you might as well just switch that switch, kick it into forwards and start to regain your focus. Look, 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. So make sure that you adjust your speed accordingly. I'm sorry to speed up now as soon as I reach the sign. If I went faster before the sign, which I did on my driving test and failed, I started doing 20 mile, 25 miles an hour before the 30 mile an hour sign and I failed for use of speed. Turning left at the roundabout mirror mirror signal left here we are no one on the right approaching speeds nice and smooth that way it gives me plenty of time to look to see the road to assess and look seeing the ambulance all good now when i get a good visibility so over the brow of the hill i can see and if i feel it's safe i adjust my speed and speed up now i'm pretty much back at the test center now guys okay it's just somewhere around here somewhere around here i think roundabout turn right so i'm a little bit new to the area so look at this so we're going to come round here on the right to get to this roundabout and then the roundabout you could say turning right or straight depends on what you want i put the signal on to just try and benefit people and we're back to the high street and i believe i may have taken a wrong turn just there uh towards test actually no that is that is correct that is correct it's further down here i will need to turn right again okay so i'll be doing plenty more videos like this at test centers that i'm not so familiar with a little bit like mill hill and hendon i have been here a few times in the past this pedestrian crossing is green so i'm going to keep going Uh, Focusing on this car here, is he going to edge out, watching his wheels, looking to see if I can see his reflection in the mirror, maybe I can see his eyes, and then i got a good understanding of where he's going to go next. So there's two different ways of going back to the test centre. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this next road here on the right, mirror, mirror, signal right. Position, this is the hard turns, guy. Position close to the centre of the road, reach the centre of the road that you're turning into, and turn right. Okay, and now we're doing Lardo again. Look, assess, decide, act. Oncoming vehicle, is it going fast? Yes, it's speeding up. I'm going to slow down. So if they go fast, we go slow. See that over the center line as well? I was predicting that. I could see the parked vehicles on the other side of the road. I knew that the oncoming traffic needed to go round them. In order for that, they would have to go into the middle of the road, like I have to do now to go around that van. Check the mirrors and move back in if it's safe to do so. When we go out, check the mirrors, come out. Now look, I'm going over the center line, even though there's an oncoming car. It's quite far away. Now I make my position, this is position B. So A would have been to stop at the first car. B would have been to stop here. 
Because I had the gap from the oncoming vehicle, I went to position B. Okay, so these are little techniques that I use to try and help people pick places whether they need to stop at A or B, and then we move on building the skills about assessing the speed of the vehicles in front, knowing whether we can move from A to B, or whether we need to stop earlier at A. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that I'm covering, because I know I'm covering it quite quickly and fast and showing you a test route, uh, then you can always write the comments, uh, questions in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to help you out with those. End of road, turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left. Actually, I can go right here, sorry. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Positions a little bit off because I gave myself very very late directions now something like that does happen on your test It can happen by the way I've been in tests before COVID and the examiners missed a turn or there's traffic and they get them to go Right instead of left just like what happened there now if the examiner gives you late direction like I gave myself late direction They take this into consideration. You're not gonna fail for little inconsistencies if the examiner has been a bit inconsistent they will take this into account. Okay, so here we are at the roundabout, turn right, second exit, mirror, mirror, signal right, adjusting speeds, jogging speeds, walking speeds. This guy just decides to pull out in front of me, so I adjusted my speed to slow down. Okay, regardless of who has priority, we want to show the examiner we're going to act accordingly and be a safe and responsible road user. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Don't go over yet. Wait until you get to these lines. Then move in. Then stop here nice and straight. If you need to stop, this is where you stop. If it's safe to turn in, turn in. Now, I promised you guys at the beginning of the video to show you the back of this entrance to the Mill Hill Driving Test Center. There's a sign there pointing left. Now, see that mirror? I can use that mirror there on the right. See the circle mirror on top of the bush? Can I see? Yes, and there's no one there. Thank you, mirror. Mwah. Si magnifique. Okay, now take care. I'm going to go down the middle of this section here because I want to keep one meter from these parked cars. And now I've got another section here. Very hard to see. So I'm going to be prepared to stop here. Really slow. Now I can see. Now I go round. Mill Hill Driving Test Center car park, here we are. Woohoo! Right, if you do bay parking, you know how to do it, and you might do it here. You just take your correct reference point, which is this white line, go on the channel, check out the playlist for maneuvers if you want, all round observations, full lock steering to the right, and that's you in between the lines. Once you're in between, you straighten the wheels, come to a stop, switch your engine off. That's the end of your driving test. I've been Scott. This is two-day pass. Stay safe. Leave a like on the video. Make sure you make your comments. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.